Hello, my name is Rachel, and this is my video entry for case study two. I have picked case two and case three. In this video, I will start by explaining case two. So the MRI above shows a tumor with areas of necrosis within the tumor. And on the right is a PET scan from the same individual following administration of fluorescently labeled B-glucose. First of all, I will start by explaining how these tissues uptake glucose. So the liver glucose uptake is independent of insulin. In the fat state, glucose uptake into the muscle and adipose tissue is controlled by insulin, which is secreted by the beta islet cells of the pancreas um, in response to an increased concentration of glucose in the portal blood. In the fasting state, the glucose transported of um, muscle and adipose tissue are in the intracellular ves vesicles. These insulin sensitive tissues only take up glucose from the bloodstream in the presence of the hormone. Uh, as insulin se secretion falls in the fasting state, the transporters are internalized again, thus um, reducing uh, glucose uptake. Uh, in the skeletal muscle uptake, um, the increase in cytoplasmic calcium ion concentration in response to the nerve stimulation uh, stimulates the migration of the vesicles to the cell surface and exposure of active glucose transporters, or whether there is significant insulin stimulation or not. It is through GLUT4 transporters uh, that are insulin dependent and um, does need insulin present to bind the transporter, which then allows them to transport glucose. Uh, this happens in the fed state uh, where it is high in glucose that is stored as glycogen. In the fed state, the, glyco the glucagon that is released uh, will have no effect on skeletal muscle uh, because they do not have glucagon receptors. However, uh, like in the liver, they will take up free fatty acids to form ATP to continue with cell, with cell processes. In the brain, glucose is taken up in GLUT1 and GLUT3 transporters this occurs at an insulin-independent in matter, uh, thus allowing the brain to continuously intake glucose to perform its function. The glucose uptake is only used for glycolysis in the brain. It is not used for gly glycogen synthesis. However, in the fasting state, the brain requires glucose. Uh, if it does not get it from glycogen stores, it gets it in. The, uh, it gets it from the liver when it releases glucose into the bloodstream during the release of glucagon. And in adipose tissue, it uptakes glucose through GLUT4 transporters. As mentioned earlier, GLUT4 transporters are insulin dependent. Thus, this uptake only occurs during the fat state when glucose levels are high and insulin levels are high. The decrease in insulin and increase in glucagon result, results in inhibit, inhibitation of lipogenesis and um, activation of intracellular hormone sensitive lipase which then leads to increased amount of glycerol which is a substrate for glucogeneogenesis in the liver 
and non-esterified fatty acids, which are used by the liver, heart, and skeletal muscle as their preferred metabolic fuel. So looking back at the tumor in case, studying in case study 2, in comparison to the different types of tissue, uh, we can see that the tumor will uptake glucose in much higher quantities than the surrounding tissues, which is probably which is probably through all these tissues, the liver, uh, the liver, skeletal muscle, brain, and adipose. As we can see in the PET scan, the tumor has a much more dense concentration of fluorescently D glucose. Uh, there are some modifications to this tumor which may have resulted in this. However, the main one is the concentration of blood transporters uh, that, was pre present, that was present on the tumor. Uh, these transporters must be in a higher concentration to allow glucose to be transported more rapidly. Therefore, when glucose levels are high, such as in the fed state, uh, glucose levels increase more rapidly in the tumor cells than in the surrounding cells. Thus, with these modifications, uh, the tumor cells have a higher energy store, which causes a more rapid growth in the tumors in the tumor cells than the normal the, than the normal brain cells around it. Uh, therefore, it therefore leaving, leading to a cancerous tumor growth as shown in the PET scan. Which brings me to case 3. Case 3 looks at a 5-year-old patient who is uh, brought into the pediatrician's office. The mother had noticed some symptoms in the child. Uh, the symptoms she noticed were persistent thirst, and frequent urination. So right off the bat, these two symptoms uh, had shown that this patient had diabetes. And to test for diabetes, uh, blood samples were taken for insulin measures, both at time zero and one hour after a glucose loading test. So the result uh, for the little boy is shown in the table in, that is shown in the case study. Uh, the baseline for the patient's insulin level was around 0 0.8, which is quite low uh, as a control patient should be around 6. Uh, and after one hour, the insulin levels were still very low at around 5 when a controlled patient was around 40. These tests again suggest that the patient has diabetes, specifically type 1 diabetes, uh, as he is not able to produce insulin. Insulin is a very important hormone in regulating glucose uptake. Without it, GLUT4 transporters cannot transport glucose into certain tissues. Uh, specifically skeletal muscle and the adipose tissues. Because these tissues do not receive glucose, the patient would often be very weak and tired. Uh, the prediction of the patient's fasted glucose levels uh, due to diabetes will be very high blood glucose levels. Due to the hypoglycemia present at the beginning of the fasted, fasted state, which causes the liver to release an excess amount of glucose, causing it to be very high. Two regulatory enzymes that are likely to be active in this individual's current condition is most likely to be the liver. As it is um, insulin independent and are continually active are glucose kinase, which will phosphorylate this glucose to make glucose 6-phosphate, which is then used for things in the cell, for different things in the cell. Uh, the next one is a glycogen synthase, 
which converts glucose 1-phosphate into glycogen through the process called glycogen synthesis. So in the fat state, glucagon, uh, glycogen, glycogen synthase is dephosphorylated and it is caused to be active. So these two enzymes are present in the liver, uh, which is able to transport glucose in, even with insulin deficiency, will, will cause them both to be active in this patient. Uh, so this will conclude my video entry for case study two. Thank you for listening, and I, I hope that I explained